Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting algebra problem. This problem is from a book called Further Mathematics by R.I. Porter. I'll share the link down below. So we're given two equations. One is a cubic and the other one is a quartic. These equations have a common root and we are supposed to find that root. Of course, the answer is going to be in terms of a and b. All right, let's see how we can find that common root that these equations have. So since these equations have a common root, let's call that root r. So let's call the common root r. Now, since r is a root of both of these equations, I can just plug it in. And it should satisfy both equations. And then now we're going to manipulate these equations. But before we do that, let me go ahead and number these equations. It makes it easier to keep track of. So I'm going to call this equation number one. And I'm going to call this equation number two. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take equation number one and multiply that by r. That's going to become r to the fourth power plus a r squared plus b r equals zero. And the second equation, I'm just going to multiply by negative one. And that's going to become negative r to the fourth power minus r minus one equals zero. And now we're going to add these two equations. In other words, we're subtracting the second equation from the first one after multiplication of the first one by r. r to the fourth power cancels out. Let's go ahead and arrange these terms. We get a r squared. I have br minus r, which is the quantity b minus 1 multiplied by r. And then minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, obviously, this is another equation. And I'm going to call this equation number 3. So now we have three equations, 1, 2, and 3. Let's see how we can use these to find the common root r. OK, so now the next step is I'm going to multiply number 1 by a and number 3 by r. Now, the reason why I do that is because I'm going to be able to eliminate the r cubed by doing this. So what is my first equation? My first equation is r cubed plus a r plus b equals 0. So let's go ahead and multiply that by a. That gives us a r cubed. So I'm coming from here plus multiply by a, a squared r, multiply by a, you get a b equals 0. Now the second equation will be multiplied by r, but we're going to subtract them. So instead of subtraction, we can just add the opposite. So let me go ahead and multiply the second equation by negative r instead. And that way I can just add them. Uh, so not the second one, I shouldn't say. I, I should actually say number three. So this is equation number three, and I'm going to multiply both sides of number three by negative r. And that gives us negative a r cubed. And when I multiply by negative r, I'm going to have a minus sign here. Let's just write it like this with an r squared. And then when you multiply by negative 1 by negative r, you get a positive r equals 0. Great. So now we got two more equations. We don't need to number them, but let's go ahead and just add these. Here, r cubed cancels out, and we do get a quadratic equation in r. Let's go ahead and write it this way. Negative b minus 1 quantity r squared. And now I have a squared r plus r, right? So I'm going to write it as a squared plus 1 times the quantity the quantity a squared plus 1 times r. There you go. And then I have the a, b as my constant term. And that's the only constant that I have. Equals 0. And let's call this equation number 4. Okay. So, so far I have 4 equations. This just makes it a little easier to keep track of what we're doing. So, this is my equation number 4. And then if you look at equation number 3 and number 4, something should get your attention. What is that? Well, I have a r squared and I have negative the quantity b minus 1 times r squared. So my goal is to get rid of r squared so I can end up with a linear equation. And how can I achieve that? I can just multiply number 3 by b minus 1 and I can multiply number 4 by a 
and then I can add those two equations and that's going to give me what I need. So let's see what how that goes. So I'm going to multiply 3. I want to write it nicer. I want to multiply number 3 by b minus 1. Again, this is number 3. b minus 1 is going to give me a times b minus 1 r squared. And I want to multiply number 4 by a because that's going to give me the opposite of what it is. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's take number equation number 3 and multiply that by b minus 1. So that's going to give me a times b minus 1 r squared. And then if you multiply by b minus 1 again, we already have a b minus 1. So that's just going to give me b minus 1 quantity squared. And then since I'm only multiplying by b minus 1, the r should stay there. It's going to be b minus 1 squared times r. And minus 1 multiplied by b minus 1 is just going to give me uh, you know, the minus, I, I can just put a minus sign here with the b minus 1 because that's what I'm doing basically. This is equal to 0. And now let's go ahead and take equation number 4 and multiply both sides by a. If you do that, you're going to get negative a times b minus 1 r squared. Remember, we're multiplying by positive a. And then plus a times a squared plus 1 r and then plus, we have AB, now it's going to become A squared B equals 0. And now we're going to go ahead and process these two equations, and that should give us what we need. Okay, here, we can see that R squared is going to cancel out. We have two terms that are linear in R, and I can just write it as B minus 1 squared plus A times the quantity A squared plus 1. This is the coefficient of r because I'm just adding basically the coefficients of r. So let's go ahead and group those together. And then I have a squared b minus b plus 1. So I can just write it like that. You know, we're just adding here. So that should be okay. And this is going to be my equation number 5. But you don't need to number this because that's it. So now my goal is to solve for r. So what should I do, right? Well, here's the coefficient of r. So if I go ahead and subtract this from both sides or add the opposite of that to both sides, then I can solve for r. So let's go ahead and proceed. I have b minus 1 squared plus a times the quantity a squared plus 1 and all of that multiplied by r equals the opposite of this expression. I can basically write as negative a squared b plus b minus 1. And now since I'm trying to solve for r, which is the common root for the quartic and the cubic equations, I can just go ahead and divide both sides by the coefficient of r, which is that huge quantity inside the bracket. And from here, I get the value of r as the following. Let's see what that gives us. And that's going to be the common root of these two equations. Now, let's go ahead and remember what the equations were. We had x cubed plus ax plus b equals 0, and x to the fourth plus x plus 1 equals 0. And we were trying to find the common root that they both of these equations have, obviously. And that is going to be this one. This is the common root that both of these equations have. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.